Um, what do you think? Do you think pastors are fallible? Do you think they... Do every you human being every is human fallible. Being is fallible. Every human being, that's where grace comes in. That's okay. it. See, Jesus said it. The thing is, when you when you take your eyes off God, mm. right? When you take your eyes off the source and you put your trust in any human being, the Bible says, cost is he who puts his trust in man. So, I always say that the rule that applies to the highest in the kingdom applies to the least in the kingdom. The rule of love, patience, forbearance. So, we should love pastors, be patient with pastors, forbear pastors, because they are also human beings. Mm. They are fallible. They have challenges. But they sometimes don't act like they are. Sometimes uh, they want to come out to tell you, to, to make you look like they are super I don't want to say they, because I too am a pastor. Okay. You should not even say they too, because we are all, it's ministry. We mm. are all doing ministry. Mm. But yes, there are people that God gave maybe a, a responsibility. Mm. So I was telling someone on, uh, on the phone, I said, God did not, God does not respect one higher than the other. He just gave one more responsibility than the other mm. because he will still judge everybody by the same measure. Mm. Ratio wise, I call it a ratio. Now, the thing is, anyone can come and say things that God did not tell him to say. Anyone can embellish a message, but you must do your homework to know what God is saying. Hmm. Go and you have the scriptures. Go and check. Go and check for yourself. That's that's just it. Um, 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 Jesus told Peter, said, "Feed my sheep." Mm -hmm. So we are the sheep of of God, mm -hmm. of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And then there are caretakers who take care of us till we are man enough to handle our responsibility in God. Now, there's a difference between the gift and the fruit. Gift, God gives gifts to anybody he wills. Mm. But fruit comes through maturity. Mm. You understand? Having worked with God, having worked on yourself as and allowed God to work on you mm. as you're walking with him, you know? So, not everybody has those fruits. Okay. But plenty of people can have gifts, right? When it comes so to... Okay, go on. Yes, so the, for me, when we are, we're talking about... I have gotten to the point where, I, the same way I will not talk about my brother's challenges. Mm. I will not talk about a pastor's challenge. Mm -hmm. I will not talk about anybody, whether you are a, mm -hmm. on the, what, because as I'm talking about someone else, what I, my own challenges are reflecting on me. Yeah. But I would say this, no one is, fall is infallible. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect. Everyone yeah. is learning. I can come on the altar. I, sometimes I, when I'm preaching, I tell them, this thing I want to say, write it with pencil because I've not confirmed it. Yes, so you can clean it. Mm. Because I'm just a loudspeaker. You cannot accredit a saying to the speaker, to the loudspeaker, okay. when the real speaker is holding the mic. Oh. It's like, oh, you hear something from the speaker and you are going to the speaker to say word. You understand? Mm. Or from your earpiece and you are healing the earpiece. Mm. No, it's the person who is speaking. Yeah. You understand? So just the same way we are supposed to be loudspeakers of the Holy Spirit. Wow. What the Holy Spirit is saying, you understand? I'm not a, yeah, you find people who say all those things, who, who act like, oh, I'm perfect. But then you, when you have worked on yourself, you will know that, okay, this person is not perfect and I will not judge him by the standard he has set for himself. Yeah. I will judge him by the standard of love. Mm. And nobody has tied your hands to be where, I was, going, I was saying something, right? So Jesus, we are, his, we are his sheep. He said, my voice, he was talking about the voice of his shepherd voice, that his sheep will recognize his voice. You should grow in your work with God to the point where you recognize his voice. So mm. when someone comes in his name and says something, you can weigh it and say, okay, this is not scripturally, this may not be scripturally correct. Now, it's not for you to go online and blast anyone. Mm. Unless God has told you to, because there is also the prophetic position, which is very unpopular. Mm. It's like God sets up the prophets to go and kill himself. Okay. Because remember Jesus said, Jerusalem that killed the prophet. Yeah. Up to John the Baptist, he was killed. Mm. Right. Because 
what it's like God sends only sends a prophet when everything is is messed up. When his people have turned away, he will send you and go and speak against. Imagine John the Baptist speaking against an establishment that was more than 400 years old hmm. after they came back from Babylon. Uh, things have been set. Then you come, you, you are Jesus, you come and you start talking. Jesus gave a, a, a parable, right, of a, a, the master sending a servant. The first servant was killed, second servant killed, third servant killed, son, sent his son, son was killed. So the position of the prophet speaking against maybe, and, and God always sends the, those people to his people. So it is for you to check what are these people saying? Mm. Is it true? Mm. You understand? And most of the times, prophets are, on they are disorganized. They, mm. they speak based on what is flowing inside of them. So I've seen a lot of people who people laugh at and say, ah, this one is talking against this, then he will not, he will watch his life, he will not go anywhere. You're not in any position to say that. Okay. Since if you are saying nobody's in a position to talk about the system, you two don't talk about the person talking about the system. Mm -hmm. You be wise because sometimes God can send a man a to go against the grain. Mm. And if they are killed, so be it. That's, yeah, that's the way of the prophet. That's mm. what I've seen. Mm. So check, just check scriptures. Go through Bible history mm. and see how prophets have ended up. Mm. Bring you to this next question. Yeah. Um, I once heard, was it heard or I read from a preacher's um, book that um, it was said 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 plainly that if the man of God curses you, that nobody <laughs> nobody can turn it around okay. or can overturn it. Okay. Not even your biological father. Okay. But if your biological father curses you, that he or the, the man of God can reverse. Okay. If the preacher has said before that if God has blessed you, no man can curse you, then I think that would be a fallacy. If I've told you that you are blessed in Abraham, you are blessed and no man can curse you, then the only way you are cursed is when you are walking against the Holy Spirit. Mm. If you are walking against the Holy Spirit, making crooked the, the straight way of God, then you are opening yourself to a curse. Mm. Then I can speak, any child of God can speak against what you are doing as long as he is standing on the highest authority and speaking by that authority, not by his own, um, what's it called? Not ideology. Yeah, not by his own ideology. Uh -huh. So that idea of maybe somebody can curse somebody and it's irreversible. Well, if you don't know who you are in Christ, a man can curse you. If, if I curse someone who is in Christ, mm. I am cursing Christ. Mm. Paul was persecuting the body. Paul was persecuting the church. Persecuting the church, locking people up. Those people were not apostles. And God, Jesus appeared to him and said, why are you persecuting me? You understand? Mm. Why are you fighting me? That's what he said. Mm. So, he said, as, oft, as much as you do to the least of these people, you do to me. Mm. So if you curse a child of God for no genuine reason, and that curse, that word, is not coming out from, is not by the Holy Spirit, then... Mm. So Ananias and Sapphira, they were lying, right? They lied against the... And Peter said, why are you lying, right? And if, if he fell. Peter asked him, why are you lying? Peter didn't say, I curse you. Mm. Peter asked him, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? And then he said, oh, you too, you are lying. You are going to follow suit. Look at your, the body of your husband. This is the result of lying to the Holy Spirit. So that's, that one has to do with the Holy Spirit. There was a time a man was cursed with blindness because he was trying to bribe to get the gift of the Holy Spirit. You understand? And so if it is a just, for a just purpose, you are fighting against the kingdom of God and all. But then um, a, a, a man who walks with God, 
who walks closely with God will be very, 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 very slow to speak how much more close. Mm. You mm -hmm. know? So even James was saying, how can you with the mouth that you bless also cause, mm. that you bless with also cause? So yeah, I don't think there's any need for that kind of talk to come, mm. to come up. That's, mm. um, what, what, what do you think? Let, let's come down to, to, um, to one of the most um, arguable thing in present day Christendom. Um, what, what do you think? What did Jesus Christ say about tithing? Okay, well, Jesus was under Jewish law. He just mentioned, he was talking about, he was talking to the Pharisees, right? Um, and was saying, you guys pay tithe of all those things, mint and all those things, but you leave the weightier matters of the law. Now, um, if you go statistically, there was no place where it was written that the apostles took tithe, right? Um, for me, tithe is like a partnership. Okay. Mm, giving in general is a partnership. Mm -hmm. So um, there was a gentile called Cornelius, a Roman uh, centurion, that was giving alms to the poor and praying mm. to God, right? And God sent an angel to Peter. He sent an angel to him too in the dream and said, I will get, send mm. your men to go and get someone from Joppa, right? In a house, Simon, the house of Tana. Uh, sorry, the house of Simon, the Tana. Simon, Simon. Yeah. At the and then you find a guy there. So Peter also, you know, God, uh, God spoke to him in a dream. So it wasn't because, oh, he paid tithe. Mm -hmm. It was because he gave and he prayed. It was in the, the order was prayer and giving, your prayer and your arms. What happened, you know, um, when I pastored, I discovered that the Bible is not, telling you to give to be blessed mm -hmm. it's telling you to give because you are blessed okay so people say when you give this amount of money you god will bless you i now ask who blessed you with the small one that you are giving mm. because satan doesn't do mm. so god gives the seed right so yes in the new covenant if i want to give 10 percent i give it out of love. Mm -hmm. If I want to give 20%, I give it out of love. Mm -hmm. Now, the idea of giving 10% is not, is not bad, so that it doesn't need to be annulled. But the idea of giving it a name, putting a blessing or a curse on a it, condition. a condition on it, making people, compelling people to give out of fear, mm -hmm. that is where the problem is. So I can give 20% if I want. In fact, I don't count percentages. I just go, God says, give to this guy who is working. Give to this need in church. Make So it's like I am telling God, you own my finances, and I'm using this, this particular amount, you know, to remind you that you, you, you own it. And to remind myself, yes, yeah. that what I have is yours, mm. and what you have is mine. Mm. So in the new testament god has taken all from us everything everything says. so yes, so you can give hundreds so you can you can give it must you give it to the church must you must you give it to the church or you can just give it to someone i give who it to the work or someone who i give it to the work Part the work of, of what the work what the work the work of the gospel okay okay so the work doesn't have to be in church the work can be oh there's someone who always sweeps the church okay or there's someone who always comes to church that has a need or there's someone on your way to church, mm -hmm. the person comes and knocks on your window. Jesus said, I was hungry, you did not feed me. Okay. I was naked, you did not clothe me. I was in prison, you didn't visit me. Then the people said, when did we see you that we didn't do it? He said, as much as you did not do it to these ones, you didn't do it to me. So it's okay for you to give your tithe to someone who is in need? Yes. If, if that's what you have, it's an emergency, the person needs it. It's okay if God is leading you to do it. Don't just be reckless with it. Okay. I, I am not. I don't throw away the. I'm not. I'm not. Mm, I'm, I won't say I, I've not built a, like a tabernacle around it to say, oh my tithe, I must give it to. Mm -mm. And it, every giving was meant to meet needs, mm. not to enrich anybody further. Mm. You understand? So you who has, you should be thinking about giving 
that person that doesn't have. Mm -hmm. So God is more concerned about meeting the needs of the people, you know, than just uh, oh, giving for giving's sake. So yes, tithing must go into meeting needs. It met the needs of the, if we we'll go to the Old Testament, it met the needs of the Levites. The priests took the offering, the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. The Levites were taken care of by the percentage that people left. There were times where people would leave, uh, God would tell them to leave a fifth mm -hmm. of their produce. You know, it's still under contention, but no one should stamp a law and say, if you don't do it, you, you are cursed. doomed, you are cursed. It's not, it's, that's not Christ. Mm. That's not Christ. The disciples, there's no evidence that they took tithe from anyone. So but they, the, the, you know, there were times there where people were, would there give were to take care of the house. provisions. Yeah. yeah. So there's no way they could have taken tithe because they were in Jerusalem, you understand? Mm -hmm. They were in a Jewish community. Mm -hmm. And it was the high priest or the Levites mm -hmm. that took that 10%. So they would have been killed if they had found out that, oh, these guys are taking the position of Levites, mm. whereas they are not. Mm. So yes, they were, the, the church is founded on generosity. Okay. Right? One of the foundations is generosity. So there should be no time where a minister is complaining, or where a minister should complain, or where a minister should be in lack. Because as you are being ministered to spiritually, you owe. Mm. So there are, there are levels of giving. So when I give to my pastor, I give out of love and appreciation, mm -hmm. not out of compulsion. But when you give to your pastor out of love and appreciation, which is okay, and then there is someone who is not in that position of a pastor who is also in the church. Of, of course you give. Okay. You should give. Because we find people who say, you know, if I give to the pastor, you know, I, I would give, I would, I say would the soil, right I soil. The right soil. Yeah. The Okay, so fertile, fertile, fertile soil, soil. Uh, it's a level of understanding that God is breaking. Yeah. And, and God is telling us, come up here. Because, you know, at some point I, I believed it, but I then I, I sat down and meditated. And I remember what Jesus said, if you give to this person, you've given to me. Mm. He who lends to the poor gives to his maker. Mm. You understand? So, so um, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Giving. So yeah, I'm 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 trying to just balance it. Yeah. So yes, um w in the book of Acts, people gave generously. They brought it to the apostles' feet. So the apostles were custodians okay. and distributors. Okay. So when I bring something to church, I should expect that it will be used for the welfare of the people, okay. especially those who serve, mm. who are in who serve and who need you know, one or two things, right? But there's the mm. extreme where I see you, you, you are struggling, I know you are struggling, you're not well dressed, I eye you up and down, then I go to my pastor who is, you know, who is, yeah, who is the fertile soil right. and I give. Say, so you no, know, if I give you now, I won't get that blessing, I have to give a man of God, it's so wrong. That's because you don't see Christ in that person. So it's like the story of the Good Samaritan where the high priest saw the guy on the floor and tried to avoid him because if he had touched that guy, blood would have stained his garment. He would have been unclean for seven days. Mm. So it was more about, ah, let me go to the tabernacle and save my Lord because mm. uh -huh, this guy now will make me unclean. Mm. The same thing with the Levite. Then the outcast goes and does the job because following Jesus, you understand what God was trying to say in the law. So it wasn't the garment that made you a priest. Mm. It just represented your priesthood. What made you, what you are a priest, why you are a priest is to do God's work. With or without the garment, you are a priest. It wasn't the garment that was ordained. Mm. The garment was just put on you mm -hmm. after you were ordained. Yeah. So he puts all those things above the real work that a priest should do, which is minister on behalf of those who are dying. And you see one dying, and you avoid your job mm. because you want to go and you know, show yourself in the temple. You know. Let's l I prefer to focus on the truth. Okay. 
and take a, a let's focus because I've been in that position for a long time where I lament everything that's going on in mm. the church and God tells me you cannot you cannot cancel what is real okay because of what is fake mm. and there's never any anything that was the first of its kind that will be fake okay when it's the first of the of its kind it can never be fake okay yeah it is the next one that looks like it mm. that will be judged based on the first one mm. so the truth came before the lie the truth always comes before the lie death god always speaks before satan comes mm. because he needs the truth to tell his lie okay yes okay so the greatest lie is 99 percent true the greatest lie is 99 percent true yes wow once i take once I just, I just create another OJ, <laughs> right? Close. Look so much like you, okay. But the content of that OJ is not like the real one. Okay. That OJ can deceive anybody. Mm. You understand? But then will I say OJ is a bad person mm. or that OJ is fake? Okay. You understand? Yeah. So I used um, a designer. As an example, I said, when you get fake designer, because people, I, I live among, I, I, I interact a lot with people who blast the church, they'll bring something about pastors, and I'm like, no. See, as much as you, you, if you want to talk about the body of Christ, don't talk about what people are, or what people who claim a thing are doing. Mm -hmm. Look at what is in the Bible. What is God saying, what did Jesus say in the scriptures? Mm. You understand? Not what men are saying. Mm. So check it out. Instead of now saying, oh, the church is messed up, let's say that thing that person did was wrong. So we should pick that thing and not the church itself. Yeah, mm. because even the church is still growing. Mm. The church is still growing. And uh, I, like I said, I've been, I was in that position for a long time where I was like, no, these things are wrong, these things are wrong, these things are wrong. You know, let's just focus on Christ, mm. his teachings. Because Hebrews, when the writer of Hebrews existed, mm -hmm. when he wrote that thing in Hebrews, which I will say soon, they were already apostles. Okay. He said, God who had in the past and oftentimes spoke to us through the prophets yeah. has spoken to us through his son. Final. So follow his son. Go into the scriptures. I tell people, you try to use Paul to correct Jesus. No. Look, Paul is under Jesus. Mm. Look for how what Paul said merges with what Jesus said. And not the biggest challenge I see that we have in the body of Christ is how we deploy scriptures, how we use scriptures. Mm. Now, I always tell people that the word of God is not pizza. It's eba. Swallow it whole. It's okay. not, you don't break it into pieces into and say, oh, uh, verse 22 says this. No, read the whole book mm. and understand. Then get this. A Christian apologi apologi uh, uh, apologist said something. He said, the Bible was not written to you. It was written for you. It was okay. written for your learning. Now, sometimes we read Corinthians and we, s we, s we think we're in that congregation. But then we forget that there is an audience that Paul wrote to. What was characteristic of that audience? Why did he say those things that he said? Mm. W what were the because he was writing writing to people he knew he interacted with he knew what the problems were so if i'm talking to an oj and i'm talking to a toller based on relationship and experience it will be very different if i'm writing a letter to my wife and i'm writing a letter to you so if i write a letter to my wife and i don't put her name i just say to i'm writing to lecky anybody in lecky can pick it up and say I have a love letter from Nusa, mm. whereas I was writing to my wife. Mm. So you need to know the context in which those things are said, have been said, and understand. Follow Christ. Go to the teachings of Jesus. Follow Jesus. Live. Stephanie. Yes. Your Paul, Paul commended the Berians. He said they, they go back to the scriptures to check. You understand? And then don't be moved. Just follow Jesus. Mm. You will see everything. Mm. You will know everything. But if you if you follow him to an extent, you have his heart, where you are not placing judgment on anyone. Mm. All judgment is placed on his shoulders because mm. God has given him all authority. So he said, I am the true and faithful witness. So your work is not to judge anyone, but do what he has sent you. Mm. When you do what he has sent you, you are creating, you are creating salt that will solve the 
the problem. So I'm not saying there are no issues. There are issues. But I'm saying there's the real. Let's just face mm -hmm. what, what Christ is saying, what Christ has said. Finally, will, yeah. will, will you ever write a love song to your wife? I make it public. I could if I had the liver. I don't get what do you mean by what do you but mean? But I have a wedding song that will release. What do you mean by liver? Uh, because your wife, your wife you know, as, as we be for this country, especially. <laughs> but yeah, human beings, you know, as we be. Once somebody does something outside the box you created for him, it becomes an offense. Yeah. So I've heard people say, oh, industry or ministry. And I'm like, hey, you are a minister in the industry. Don't. Though you cannot remove, once you print CD and you carry and go a labor for marketing, you do industry. Yes, there are people who sell flavor CD. They also sell Nathaniel Bassi CD. Mm. You understand? So everyone, it's like a string. Put your own product there. Let it go to the right person. I would like, yeah. to, I would like to listen to a love song from you. Yeah, but always on my mind, though, and always pray for you, a love songs, but not, I try to redefine what love songs are. Okay. Because once we hear love song, that it, it, from the mainstream love song now, uh, baby take off your clothes. <laughs> That's lost. Lost song. Lost song okay. Not the love. Okay. Love exists between a mother and a son. Okay. Love exists between friends. So, we're so talking I about try to explain that love. Between love between man and woman. And love between man and woman. Well, you can apply the ones I've written to a woman. Now, I know how many. Uh, I don't know how many, <laughs> but I've heard so many <laughs> stories of people saying, "Oh, our relationships were mended because." Of always pray for you yeah. and always on my mind. Mm. That's a love song. Mm. I will not define it in the flesh. I'll define it based on what I feel God has taught us that love is. Mm. Yes, so I don't do love song to my wife in a way. <laughs> but I have a wedding song. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So and I go so I'll bring it out <laughs> so people can have <laughs> can be able to express their love to their loved ones. Everywhere. That's anywhere. what the music is. Yeah, yeah everywhere. It works everywhere. Mm. Yeah. So Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs>